We'll start by carefully analysing the item for any patterns or sequences. The five frames at the top consist of two main elements, a white arrow and a large triangle made up of four small triangles, which are coloured grey, white and black. Now let's analyse the arrow. Note that it has two attributes, position and direction. The arrow in the first frame is pointing to the right and positioned at the top. In the second frame, the arrow is pointing up and located to the left of the triangles. In the third frame, the arrow is pointing to the right and positioned below the triangles. So we can see a pattern for the position of the arrow. It rotates 90 degrees anti-clockwise from one frame to the next. This pattern also applies to the fourth and fifth frames. However, when we look at the direction of the arrow, we can't see a pattern yet. Generally, when we don't see a rule, we have to assume that there is no rule. But we'll review this if, based on the answer options, we still have doubts about the right answer. This is our first rule. We can now deduce the position of the arrow for the sixth frame. The position of the arrow will rotate again, so that it is to the left of the triangles, just like the arrow in the second frame. We can see that the arrow in answer options A and D is not in the right position, so we can eliminate them. Now we can turn our attention to the triangles. We need to focus on the colours of the four small triangles in the first frame. Let's start with the one in the middle. The colour changes as follows. Grey, white, black, grey, white. This is our second rule. This pattern will clearly be followed by black. We can therefore rule out answer option C. Now we can focus our attention on the three small outer triangles. They move 120 degrees clockwise from the first frame to the second. After this, they again move 120 degrees clockwise from the second frame to the third. The challenge starts at frame 4 where the rotation is now 120 degrees anti-clockwise in contrast to frame 3. As the logic changes, we can immediately assume that something has changed the logic compared to the previous frames. This is the moment we need to go back to a bit of unused information, which is the direction of each arrow we immediately notice that the arrow points clockwise in frames 1 and 2. However, in frame 3, it points anti-clockwise. We can therefore deduce that if the arrow points clockwise, the small outer triangles will rotate clockwise in the next frame. If it points anti-clockwise, they will rotate anti-clockwise. This is our third rule. Of the remaining answer options B and E, the only one that fits this description is answer option E. So the correct answer is E.